for joining me. Uh, this is uh, Finding and Engaging a Great Artist, a Non-Artist Primer, uh, covering tons of info today. Uh, getting your ducks in order uh, before you even start searching, where to search, how to search, reaching out, paying, giving feedback, all kinds of stuff. A uh, little quick info about me before I start so you know where that info is coming from. Uh, I am the co-founder and art director of uh, Chickadee, which is a visual design and art production studio that I run with my wife, Sarah. Uh, I'm also an artist at Spry Fox, maker of Triple Town and Alpha Bear and other amazing happy games that help you fill your joy quota. Uh, and finally, I'm an educator at uh, Maine College of Art, which is a small fine art school in Portland, Maine, which is the original Portland, except for probably at least one in the UK. Uh, so I have a lot of jobs, uh, but just so the about me section isn't just like the jobs I do, that's sort of a shallow view of a human being. Uh, here's like a little fun fact. Uh, last year, I gave a talk, and I wore this exact same shirt. <laughs> they, oh my god, thank you so much, I feel the same way. Uh, and, and it's, but there's a reason, it's not just like a shtick, like, oh hey, that's black shirt guy. It's uh, because this is the only shirt I own that doesn't make me look like a cartoon lumberjack. <laughs> and that is, all of my other shirts are plaid flannel, which is like a super common look in Maine. But in the Bay Area, you look like out of work L.L. Bean model, or like guy who knows a lot about World War II. Uh, so let's dive in now. Well, <laughs> uh, OK. What you need to do before you start searching. Um, a prototype uh, is just about the most valuable thing you can have. Um, since I'm assuming you don't have an artist at this point, don't worry about making it look pretty. Uh, you know, just use game jam rules, uh, gray box, uh, asset store stuff, um, royalty free assets, that's all good. Um, you'll also need an idea about the work you want done, because that's going to dictate the type of artist you need to look for. Uh, you know, a concept artist to help shape the vision, or um, you know, a modeler to model characters and props, or a painter, or an animator, art director, etc. Now, this maybe seems like a you know, yeah, no shit kind of point, uh, but it's uh, it's actually a, a pretty fine point. Um, when Chickadee started working with Spry Fox, it was because we answered. Um, a help wanted ad that said, hey, we need a modeler for our next project and bonus points if you can animate. Um, but what they actually needed uh, was someone comfortable moving through the visual development process, uh, someone who could um, do concept art, who could plan pipelines, who could do VFX, who could do a whole bunch of stuff. It was their uh, first 3D project, and they sort of yet didn't know what they didn't know. Um, and so if you're, if you're thinking like, oh, I thought I knew what I wanted, but maybe I don't now, um, try searching for a generalist or uh, just a game artist. That's going to be someone who's comfortable wearing a lot of hats. Uh, reference of other work is also good to have. Reference that hits like close to uh, the emotional mark or, or kind of like the vibe you're going for. It's useful to have uh, something to show. Uh, like to get uh, a potential artist in the same headspace as you. Uh, so go ahead and like make a Pinterest board, just fill it up with stuff that like, even if it's like, oh, this isn't the style of character we actually want, this, it feels right, right? The, uh, it's, it's okay to get emotional on that. Um, other media, this kind of related to the last point, other media like music is sometimes really useful too, uh, because uh, it's useful to kind of sometimes make a, like a playlist and say, hey, this sounds the way the art should look, right? Get them in the uh, same headspace as you. If you have, obviously, soundtrack samples or something, uh, be ready to send, send those along. That's all good stuff. Uh, a list of verbs or adjectives is also good to have. Uh, stuff that describe what the player should be you know, feeling when they're playing the game or stuff. Uh, or, or, or uh, what they should be thinking when they look at a screenshot. You know, I think verbs and adjectives, that's sort of like a common um, game design uh, thing, but it's also really good for visual design. Uh, you know, and finally, you're going to need a sense of your budget, and that is a big topic, so let's dive down into compensation chuching. Come on, that was better. Give a little more. Okay, fine, I'll move on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, so the uh, easiest. Right, the most straightforward way is like, 
Uh, to pay an artist is just to have an art budget, which is maybe not fair in an IGS talk. Uh, but right, like, hey, I need art, and here is the money, and then now I thank you for the art. Uh, but again, IGS talk, let's talk about other stuff. Royalties, profit sharing, uh, that kind of stuff, that's also an option. Obviously, that takes away you know, the upfront burden of payment, or at least eases it. Um, but something to consider, uh, if you're offering royalties without having proof that you've successfully shipped a game, that's sort of going to make that an unappealing payment scheme um, because there's, it, it, uh, there's risk that that payment never comes, right? Um, so there's a few points in this whole talk uh, where you know, your work history or your reputation um, in the community, it's going to add a lot of weight. This is one of those points. Uh, if people have good things to say about you or they have a positive impression of the past games you've made, um, that's going to take some of that risk out of the prospect of royalties. You know? and, and you shouldn't be afraid of, of using that. That's a tool in your toolkit. Um, again, though, if you're just maybe starting out, you don't have that reputation yet, you're still building up, still there's other options. Um, you know, if you don't mind going with someone who has maybe less experience uh, than you'd like, depending on the laws in your area, you might be able to get an intern for free so long as they're doing it through their university, they're getting credit. Um, you know, they get experience, you get art, it probably will need to be touched up because again, they're just starting out, but um, you know, it gets the ball rolling, you have some art. Uh, beyond that though, this is such an important point, Offering credit or experience or exposure is like flagrantly shitty. Just, just don't do it. Uh, don't be afraid to get creative with payment. Um, one option is working for trade. Now the obvious thing is like, oh hey, maybe you both have side projects and like you trade code for art or something like that. Um, but I think you can get more creative than that. I one time did, this is true, I one time did um, not a ton of work, but a good amount of work uh, for uh, a bunch of super delicious homebrewed beer. And uh, I personally think I got the better deal because I got drunk for like many days and they just got some assets. Uh, but we were both happy. The point is, is that we were both happy with the arrangement, right? That's creative, we felt good, especially me. Uh, so another option is to allow um, the artist to retain rights to the work they make. When I was starting out, uh, I did a bunch of work for different studios um, with me retaining the rights to the assets I produced. And then after the game shipped or after the contract was over, um, I you know, would package up some of that art and I would sell it in asset stores. And they got a lower cost or a lower price because of that because I was able to like, make up the difference you, you know, selling to in, in, you know, uh, third party markets, right? Um, so let's talk briefly about experience as it relates to budget. Uh, an experienced artist, someone with you know, a bunch of ship titles, uh, they're going to have um, a higher rate than someone who's more junior, I think, obviously. But their experience can ultimately save you money because uh, they're not going to be um, hitting, they'll be jumping over hurdles that uh, someone more junior might hit. Um, and in that regard, they're sort of getting more done in less time. Uh, but you know, going with someone more junior, it actually might be the start of a really long and fruitful relationship. Uh, junior people are going to cost less. They're going to make more mistakes, um, but uh, everybody gets better with time, right? Um, so if you're talking to someone, they don't quite have the experience you wish they did, but you like really get along with them on a personal level, uh, you, you consider putting that time in to help them grow. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, where to search for your new artist. Uh, so first and um, maybe most obvious, your own network. People you've worked with in the past, uh, people you've met at local media, uh, meetups or you know, stuff like this. Um, these people are resources and you can mine that resource. Uh, it's sort of the whole point of a network, right? Uh, sort of related to that, recommendations, right? Are, it, they're sort of actually my favorite way of finding people. Um, you know, if a friend or a dev I respect is, you know, singing the praises of someone, they immediately get a million bonus de grand points when I'm weighing them against other people. Uh, this is another place where having a good reputation, it, it can really help you out. Uh, 
if one of uh, my favorite people is looking for someone, um, I'll excitedly scan my own network to see if I can like find a matchup. Um, just the thought of these two people working together, it's like, oh, that's gonna be sweet, good. Uh, so social media, another thing. Um, there's, uh, you know, on Twitter, obviously, there's a ton of, uh, you know, creative hashtags, hashtag game art, hashtag visible women, um, you know, use that stuff to uh, send out your own help wanted ad. You know, Chickadee, like I said, uh, they, we started working with Spry Fox because of just a tweet, and that was almost two years ago. Um, so it's, it's a powerful tool. Uh, and again, uh, uh, this is a place where good reputation, it's super useful, right? Um, you know, just like with recommendations, you know, if I see a friend's studio is looking for people, signal boost. You know, if uh, I see a studio is looking for people and I don't know a soul there, I just am a huge fan of their work, signal boost. And so uh, finally, you know, you can look through industry sites uh, for work you like the look of. Um, you know, or maybe, uh, you know, artists seeking work ads. Uh, Polycount, if you're looking for, like, you know, high-res, high-fidelity 3D stuff, Polycount kind of can't be beat. Cartridge is sort of like social media site mixed with portfolios. It's sort of a weird one, but you can look at stuff like that. Um, forums, if you're using, like, Unity or Unreal, um, you know, forums usually have, hey, I'm looking for work, or hey, I need work. It's a good place to, uh, to look. Um, Okay, keep it moving. Um, what are some other things? Just random extra stuff that needs to be considered. Uh, so, hey, is this full time or is this a contract? And if it's a contract, for how long? Personal um, connection is going to become way more important uh, the longer you're going to be working with someone. You know, if you're looking for you know just a handful of models, you can probably focus solely on skills. Uh, you, you know, if you're looking for something that's going to take months or maybe years, uh, you're going to want to like this person on a personal level. Uh, another thing, how specialized are your needs? You know, if you're making a pixel art roguelike game or something, at this point, there's a lot of people who can do that. Uh, you know, but if you're making something maybe more avant-garde, like, hey, this is a video-based narrative exploration game or something like that, that's way more specialized. You're going to have a hard time finding someone to do that. You will probably have to pay them more as well. Uh, if your schedule is tight, you're going to want to find someone with experience. Again, you'll pay more, um, but the artist won't need as much guidance. And uh, you know, as I stated before, they're going to avoid obstacles that someone more junior might hit. They're going to help you, which obviously is going to help you hit that deadline. Um, and then how senior is the position? Uh, you know, a production artist with a couple years experience, that's easier to find and pay for um, than, you know, hey, I need an art director. Um, so if, uh, so sort of dive down into that, you know, if you're searching for someone like that, someone with a lot of experience, you, there's sort of no way to cut it. You're going to have to be prepared for a long search. Uh, there are just like more boxes to check off. You, you need to find someone you know you enjoy working with, who has the experience you need, um, who you can compensate fairly, uh, who uh, is m willing to move to your area or if they're not already there, um, and someone obviously who's interested in working on your game. Uh, you know the rub here is that senior people like that you know, are often already spoken for or they have roots planted someplace and they don't want to, you know, disrupt their family with a move, you know, or they're just more expensive than you can pay for. Um, so long search, but uh, a few suggestions, because that's the point of this. Uh, first, use every search method you have available. You should be doing all of this stuff that I already said. Uh, you know, search your network and recommendations and put up ads everywhere, you know, social media, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, probably obvious. Um, but another thing to consider, and, you know, I think uh, this bears repeating. I, I alluded to this before. You know, if there's a person that you really... Um, like working with, but they're more junior than you'd like, you know, really consider giving them a chance to prove themselves. Um, progress on your game will be slower, at least at the start, but you know, everybody gets better. Uh, one important note on that though, um, if you go this route, 
be sure they have a firm grasp of uh, visual design topics like color theory or composition or wrestling with visual hierarchies. These are all like fundamental art um, issues. Uh, and I would say maybe additionally make sure they have a knack for problem solving and lateral thinking and stuff like that. Um, and so I, I, I sort of just alluded to this. I, I personally think uh, really good art directors for games are basically um, really good traditional artists that have an understanding of technology. Um, and while interactivity is uh, pretty unique to games, there are other mediums that um, you know, have that mix of uh, traditional art and technology. You know, graphic design, animation, two examples. Those fields uh, require you to understand visual design. You know, they're multi-step processes that often involve, you know, various teams of specialists. They require you to get X done in uh, Y time for Z budget, right? That stuff is all very similar to games. Uh, so besides asking, you know, your dev peers for recommendations. You know, consider asking friends from other related industries, if you have them, um, for recommendations. There might be like a graphic designer out there that, you know, when paired with, um, you know, a lower experienced generalist or tech artist or something to help explain what can and can't be done in the realm of games, you know, that might be a really, really great combination for you. Um, so last point in this section, um, and this is sort of like the most important, uh, whichever route you go, whoever you go with, you generally I think you want to shoot for rapport. Uh, you'll need to create uh, critique this person's work, and that is going to be like way smoother, uh, you know, if you both um, respect each other and you both enjoy each other's company. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, so let's say you have found a, sp a specific artist you want to work with, uh, you know, and you need to reach out. What do you do? Um, if you know someone that knows both of you, consider asking for um, an introduction. It's super, it's nice and easy, right? Uh, there is sort of an instant level of trust because of that shared connection. Um, again, another benefit of having, you know, like a wide network and a good reput uh, reputation. Uh, regardless if that uh, introduction can be set up, um, I would say like just be professional, um, but make, your, make sure your tone is still friendly. The professional thing is maybe uh, more a point for um, younger professionals right now. I personally have gotten emails that have like lol OMG in them. And it's like, that's cool. I hope your game does good, but I don't think we're going to work out. Um, so professional. Um, so uh, here is like a big list. And I'll be sharing my slides with this. So Take a picture if you want to, uh, but you can also probably download this later. So write two or three paragraphs that include um, you know, what you need done, key dates, platform, engine, if there's an existing art team or art director or just like a lone artist even, because it's good to let a new person know who they'd be working with. Um, you know, uh, if there is an absolutely like non-negotiable budget, include that. Um, obviously, info about your game. This is a sales pitch. Right, uh, make that person interested, uh, and you know. Finally, it's good to let them know if um, there's a specific problem you're trying to solve by bringing them on. Uh, you know, like, oh, our characters need to feel more lifelike, or oh, we had a few interns and they got the ball rolling, but we need someone now to kind of tie it together and, and form a stronger thread that runs uh, between everything. Um, oh, and pre if you have a press kit set up send that. That usually includes a lot of that um, kind of baseline information. Um, uh, you know, and finally, it's, I think it's good to end with something like, um, you know, if you're interested, uh, you know, I'd love to send you more info or screenshots or video, et cetera, um, as well as answer any questions you may have. It's, it's, uh, it's inviting, but it's also maybe a little bit of a call to action. Okay. Uh, what if you don't have someone specific, you need to, like, blast the internet with uh, a help wanted ad. Um, if you're casting that wide net, you know, uh, create a page on your website uh, with a job listing that includes all of that information that I just mentioned. Even, even if you are um, using social media to like say, hey, we're looking for blah, more information here, link to the site. Um, so it's all that information, you know, what you need done, key dates, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can leave budget off this. I know that that's maybe an uncomfortable thing to broadcast, or maybe it even like messes up con like a, a contract with a uh, publisher or something like that. Um, but if 
that's not the case, it's still useful to, uh, to include. Um, also, include info about an art test if you're requesting one. This is sort of like, can be anyway, a sticky point. Uh, art tests are, art tests can be um, considered uh, rude or even like insulting if um, A, they're not paid or there's actually not a B to that. I just got sidetracked. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it can also sort of feel like being um, made to jump through hoops. Uh, so I sort of think a good rule of thumb is to really only request one if it's like a uniquely um, technical gig or, or uh, the artist would have to use like a special in-house toolkit or something like that. Um, otherwise, I think it's, it's appreciated, you know, if you go just by portfolio and work history and recommendations and stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, finally, this is like a small point, but it can save a ton of time. Um, request that all inquiry emails have the same subject. So like animation position or uh, artist wanted or something like that, because it's just gonna make sifting through, you know, when you have like 100 replies, sifting through that's gonna be a lot easier. Okay, boom, home stretch. Uh, you found your artist. Uh, here are some tips for uh, giving them feedback. Um, so be clear and direct, polite and friendly. You don't have to give two put ups for every put down, just clear and direct, polite and friendly. Uh, one thing we teach students when, we, uh, when they're learning to critique is that the feedback they're giving is uh, not about the person who made the work, but the work itself. You're not saying this work is bad and therefore you're a bad artist. Uh, you're saying this work doesn't yet accomplish all that it needs to, and so it just needs an iteration. Uh, so don't be bashful, I think that's the point. Um, I think you can help yourself a little bit if you do uh, a little research about art fundamentals. So, you know, visual design basics, the 12 principles of animation, um, these are things that artists know, that maybe you don't, but uh, there are countless resources on the internet uh, that will um, quickly explain a lot of this stuff. You can probably scale up in an afternoon. For example, um, you know, the 12 principles of animation are, in case you don't know, um, sort of uh, the guiding principles that were like formalized in the early 20th century, and now if you are an animation student, these are like, this is like you know geometry and calculus and blah, blah, blah. This is all like that kind of core math that you would learn as a computer science major, right? Um, that's what artists learn. And you can, there's videos that explain all of this stuff in about 30 minutes. So internet, do some research. Um, you know, even if you don't understand art, uh, don't be afraid of just trying to work through feedback. Don't worry about looking stupid or sounding stupid. Um, just sort of stumble through it because an artist is not really gonna expect that you understand all that formal stuff. You go to college to learn that. Um, very early in my career, I got a piece of feedback um, that uh, a power app I made didn't feel pointy enough. And I remember it made me so effing angry because what does that mean? Uh, after, I was, I was an asshole when I started my career, so after I calmed down, uh, I started a dialogue with this particular programmer, and um, we sort of figured out that what he was trying to say was it didn't feel fast. It was a speed power-up, and didn't feel pointy enough was, I don't get a sense of speed from that. Um, so again, just stumble through it. Uh, this shape or color or whatever reminds me of Doritos and it's not good that that's the first thing I think of when I look at this, right? Um, or, uh, stumble through it, but I, I would say um, a really important point is try to avoid subjective language. This isn't cool or this isn't edgy enough is not as informative or helpful as this doesn't feel imposing, right? Um, something to consider, and this is um, perhaps a little subjective, but 
I feel the high level purpose of all art in games is to act as visual communication about uh, the design and goals and rewards and threats and, and setting and all that kind of stuff. So um, if art looks bad, it's often that it's not saying the right thing. Uh, this art says X to me when really it should say Y. This shape looks slow, but it, should, uh, it needs to look fast. This posture looks threatening, but it needs to uh, be more passive. Uh, these colors remind me of the fall, which makes me feel cozy, but we want the player to feel stressed here. So it's worth asking yourself what the art in front of you is saying, and then compare that to what the game's design requires it to say. Uh, and then finally, uh, if you find an artist that you really enjoy working with, you know, let them know. M mention them in your weekly blog or Twitch stream or whatever. Sh give them a shout out on Twitter because it's, it's always nice to know that uh, their work is hitting the mark. And that's it. Thank you so much. Questions? Thanks, Adam. If you have a question for Adam, please go to the mic. background, so I know approximately how much artists work salary-wise, but mm -hmm. how do you turn that into a budget for a contract? That is an excellent question. So um, uh, what's the difference basically between an artist's salary and, hey, I'm contracting someone, how much is all this stuff going to cost? Um, I, that's an excellent question, and it's actually very big, uh, with a potentially big answer. Um, what I... There, there are a few different ways to do it. So um, what I often do um, when I'm, uh, I get an inquiry is um, we try to build sort of, uh, first try and find out um, what exactly this client is looking for, the, the total scope, uh, and then um, sort of see uh, how far along in their, their pro uh, the project already is. You know, is this, do they already have like an art style defined and like, oh, I'm just doing an environment set or something like that? Or is this like a total package? If it is um, just assets, um, I usually try and find a, uh, like a flat rate that is based on an hourly rate, but like, hey, f you know, for this snowy mountain art set, it's gonna cost blah. And, and this happens like in a dialogue between me and a client, right? Um, if it's visual design across a whole project, um, I try to uh, figure out, um, uh, get a rough sense of like schedule and stuff like that. But in that regard, it, it's really, there's a lot more just like back and forth. And it's just a discussion, I think, at that point. And if it's something really, really big, um, I, I personally, that's, that's when like rev share royalties, I think, really start to play in because otherwise, um, it's not sustainable. Um, I know that there are artists out there that uh, try to extract as much money as possible right up front, but I would prefer not to do that because I want the game to ship as much as anybody. Um, so it's really, I just try and work with, with a client to you know, figure out something that's fair and sustainable. One, one last question. Okay. So I had a re related question, but it, and it's in a sense unfair. Uh, I don't know how to put together a budget. I don't know how much the work would be, yet I still want to know, well, what should I pay a junior artist per hour or range? Mm -hmm. What should I pay a senior just as information? What, what is that kind of stuff going to cost as I try to put together the budget for the whole thing? I've never shipped a game. I'm just starting. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, I... I I don't know what, I've been in indie games my whole career, which I think is a little, you know, salaries and stuff are a little different um, in um, that space versus AAA. Um, I feel like last time I saw uh, uh, the like um, game developer, you know, like, hey, here's the salary range of all these various um, disciplines uh, uh, in entry level artists was maybe 40 or 50,000. But again, that's like salary at like an established um, studio, and it goes up from there. Um, Adam, we have stuff on the Polycount Wiki. If you look on for the Polycount Wiki and search for the freelance page, there's a whole listing of, of hourly rates. 
so just to do that into the, thank you so much, just to do that in um, the microphone, if you go to the PolyCount Wiki, there is uh, all of that information there. Um, I'm now forgetting, just broken to, freelance. Fr oh, free, freelance, freelance amounts. So um, again, that's another resource, yeah. Is that our time? Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah.